Have you ever wanted your Jira release notes to show up inside of Confluence? Well, today's video is sponsored by my good friends over at Amiboids, and we're going to be taking a look at their automated release notes Confluence helper app, which is going to allow us to connect Jira with Confluence. And most importantly, we're going to be able to see our release notes from Jira inside of Confluence. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you drop a like. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links down below as you definitely want to start a trial to this amazing app. Let's set up the stage before we jump into it. And let me walk you through a typical scenario. So we have releases inside of Jira. Everybody knows this, but who actually reads your releases? Well, for Jira, if you want somebody to see your releases, everybody has to have a license. Everybody needs to go into Jira, into the right project, into the right release, and then they need to know how to navigate the whole release section of Jira. And that's just a really, really big pain point. Wouldn't it be cool if your stakeholders or whoever you want to be able to see your release notes could see them inside of Confluence? And there's a couple of benefits for this, right? In Confluence, we can have guests, so completely free licenses. And most stakeholders, right, non-techie people are usually pretty comfortable with Confluence because that's where they go to see documentation already anyways. So rather than manually copying and pasting your release notes from Jira into Confluence, I'm going to show you how using automated release notes Confluence helper app is going to allow us to merge and blend these two worlds together in a really, really cool way. Now, in order for all this to work, you need to follow three steps. Number one, we're going to connect Jira and Confluence together. There's a couple of technical steps. I'm going to walk you through the majority of them. And then we're going to go to step two, which is now that we have the connection established, we need Confluence to basically have a template available that we're going to use for our release notes. And then finally, in the third and final step, I'm going to then show you how this whole integration works. And we're going to publish our release notes from Jira into Confluence with just a click or two. All right, let's jump into it and let's get started with the integration first. Inside of Confluence, we're going to actually have to do a couple of things here. We're going to be opening in Confluence and Jira. And so I like to start with Confluence. And the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to find this automated release notes and reports helper app for Confluence. So make sure you go and get that added. It should be a completely free app. Most of that work is going to be done on the Jira side, but this is critical to have installed. So once you have that installed, we're going to want to switch on over to Jira. And inside of Jira, very similar to um, the Confluence configuration, you're going to want to have automated release notes installed. Now, I do have a video that I've linked down below if you need the instructions on how to do that. In the interest of time, I just can't explain all the details, so watch that video. And there's also a second video from Admin Boys themselves that actually walks you through the entire process. It's a little long, but it's very thorough, so you can watch either of those two videos for auxiliary support. Now, assuming you do have ARN already installed, and assuming you already have Confluence Helper app already installed, the next thing we want to do is we're going to click here under integrations. Okay, now you do need to be a Jira admin to be able to get to this section. And over here on the right hand side, we want to add our Confluence instance. So give this a title. This can be whatever you want. You're going to go grab your Confluence URL, and you can simply go back to Confluence, and you're grabbing the URL from right here, top left corner. I'm going to paste that in. Use your username that you usually log in to get in there. This is blurred out for security purposes. And then we have our API token. We're going to want to go and generate an API token, which is really, really easy. All you got to do is click on this link and it's going to redirect you and let you follow all the steps. Make sure you save this API token somewhere else because once you copy it, you're not going to be able to use it anymore. Now, for the interest of this video, I've already gone ahead and done my API token. Now, the next thing, once you do this, once you hit submit, you will then want to generate a token for the ARNR Confluence app. So there's going to be a button here that's going to basically, it's going to look a little bit different because this is now showing me to regenerate because I've already established a connection. But for you, it's basically going to tell you generate the token. So you're going to generate that, copy that as well, because once you generate it, it's gone forever. So once you have that copied over, we're going to go back over to Confluence. And this time we're going to go over to our manage apps here under inside of Confluence. So over on the Confluence side, we are going to click on configuration right here. And then we're going to look for this configure ARNR Confluence helper app. So we, when you click on that, you're going to be able to click on add token. 
and then you're going to be able to basically establish your token, which this is then going to create the handshake between Jira and Confluence. So step one at this point is basically complete. And now we can move on to step two. Again, my screens look a little bit differently because I've already done the configurations, but trust me, there's documentation down below. Again, a full in-depth video that's going to walk you through all the steps, but this is very, very easy, very, very trivial. This is not mind blowing. You should be able to follow just the steps along that are given to you because it's very, very easy, very, very intuitive. So disregard the fact that I've already done the connection. It's very, very easy. All right. So now that we've done the connection, we're going to stay in Confluence because the next step is we want to create a template. Okay. So a template is not provided to you by default. So we're going to have to go in and create our very own template. So let me show you how easy that is. So back over in Confluence, you do need to go find a space. We want to pick a space where you're going to basically put your release notes. So this should be like your project space, wherever your stakeholders hang out, wherever they're going to go, wherever they're expecting to see those release notes. Cause remember we're trying to minimize the friction, right? We want to make it super easy for our stakeholders to see the releases that are typically in Jira. We want them to have them in Confluence. So pick a space where your stakeholders currently live and where it's appropriate for that. So I'm just going to come in here to this demo one and I'm going to click a brand new page. We're going to start building a template. So give it a title. So this is going to be like my release notes template and don't worry too much about the naming here because this is a template. Not everybody's going to see it. Okay. So now that you have your page created and you've given it a title, again, doesn't matter where you put it. I didn't show it right now, but I, all I did was hit create. Right. But now that you have this, this is where you can get very creative. Okay. And this is where you now have uh, uh, some flexibility to basically create whatever makes sense for you and your team. So I'm not very creative. I'm just going to put a simple table and kind of just show you how this thing all comes together, but you are limited by your imagination at this point. So let me just show you the basic, right? This would be bare bones, right? I'm going to put in a, um, release notes information. I'm going to make that a header, all right? So I'm just making a regular old confluence page. You've done a million of them. Now we're going to add our table. I'm going to delete a column. I don't actually need this column here. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to show you there's so much more. This is just bare bones, right? I'm picking the date. I'm giving it the name. I'm giving it the total number of issues, the total number of stories, total number of tasks and total number of bugs. Now this right here, there's nothing special to it. It's just text on the screen. So over here on the right hand side, things get very special. I'm going to do a slash arn, which is then going to give me all the macros that are now available because you've installed the helper app. I'm going to click variables and I just want the name of the release. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get the version name. As you can see, I can get the version description, the version date, version ID, project name, a bunch of other stuff. I don't care for all those things. Although if you do make sure you look at this entire list, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to grab the name. Now this doesn't actually insert it. All it does is lets you copy it. So you click on copy, it goes away. And then I'm going to paste that variable in next. I want the release date. So this time I'm going to do the same thing on, but this time notice that I have a date macro. So I'm going to click on that and I want the release date. That's it. Again, you have many options. So pick the ones that are appropriate for you. And I'm just going to simply click insert and this is done automatically for you. So the next, I want to do the counts. I want to get counts of number of issues. So this time I'm going to do R and this time instead of variables, instead of date, I'm going to select stats. And when I do that, I'm going to give it a name here. So total number of issues, and then I have to build my JQL. So this I'm going to do is I'm going to say project equals AAD. This is a project that I have already inside of Jira. This is where my releases are. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm just going to do that. That's all I want. I'm going to do an order by and I'm going to do rank because that's usually how I do it. Ascending. And then I'm going to click in any white space and then I'm going to click on validate JQL. Wait for that thumbs up and then you'll notice that it's going to return a count. So basically this is going to go and get every issue in this project, right? So I'm going to hit insert. That's totally cool. And then I need the same thing, but I need to specify. I want them for just the stories, the bugs and the tasks. So I'm just going to paste the same macro over here. I'm going to edit this one. And this time I'm going to put an and issue type equals story. Right. And so when I do that and I click outside here, I'm going to validate my JQL. This is not only going to grab me the stories. And so this one, because it's going basically going to be the same thing, I'm going to paste it two more times and I'm going to edit these so that they have the task and hit save. Oh, then you got to come over here, update total number of tasks. 
hit validate your JQL, and hit save. Now I'm gonna go back up because for my stories one, I didn't actually edit that. So I'm gonna change this one so it says stories. Not that it matters, this is just for you. It's what shows up here on that thing. I have my tasks ready to go, and I'm just gonna do my bugs now. So I'm gonna change the title, bugs. Change my issue type to bugs. Click on some white space and validate my JQL. And once I get my thumbs up, hit save and we're done. So at this point I have my version name, the num total number of issues, everything, tasks, bugs, everything. Then I have just the stories, just the tasks and just the bugs. But we're not quite done yet because this is gonna give me a count. And while I have a count, this is cool, but I wanna see the actual data. I wanna see the actual stories that are in this release. So in this case, I'm gonna go below my table. I'm gonna type slash R again. And this time we're looking for a JQL section. In this section, we're gonna be able to type in something like uh, stories in this release. And I can change this to be a heading. You can add uh, your little emojis and all that other good stuff. You can add a description if you want, but most importantly, you gotta add your JQL. So very similar to before, we're gonna do project equals AAD and issue type equals story. Okay, now we wanna validate our JQL, make sure it's all good. We got a green thumbs up, and then we wanna put a message, right? This message is basically going to be uh, whatever you want it to be. These are the stories in this release is what I'm gonna put in here, and I'm gonna click insert. Now in the interest of time and not to make this video super long, I would do the exact same thing for my tasks and for my bugs. So. Now that we have this, this is just a template. This is not referencing any data in Jira yet. We're gonna do that in the third step. But for step two, which was create a template, we officially have a template. So the last thing we gotta do is simply click on publish and we're good to go there. We're gonna just publish it. This is good. We're all done. This is done with step two. Let's move on to step three. So for step three, we wanna go back into Jira. And this time we wanna go to apps on the top and we want to select our automated release notes. We're not doing any configurations at this point, so we just want to go into the app. Under the app, we have a rules section, so we're going to go in there, and I'm going to click create a new rule over here on the right, and I'm going to say publish release notes to Confluence from Jira. I am going to leave everything else as is. I'm going to click on save. You have to do this. This is critical. You have to hit save, and then I'm gonna come back over here. I haven't done anything other than move my mouse up. And I'm gonna select the publish to Confluence with new editor. This is very critical. You want to make sure you pick with new editor. Uh, Confluence has made some changes. The old one, the legacy one will not work. So you wanna make sure you pick this second one, which is with new editor. So I'm gonna click on that. This is gonna give me an action name. So I'm gonna just call it action one, Confluence one. And then we have to pick our Confluence instance. So if you have multiple Confluences from step one, this is where you're gonna pick. I'm just picking the one I have. And then we're gonna to come to select source template. We have to go find the template we just made. So mine's in the demonstration space. So here I'm gonna select my select a Confluence page as a template. And then I'm gonna pick the template page that I just made. You can select the radio button for select a Confluence template, but that assumes you made a default global level template. We didn't do that. We just had a regular page. So we're gonna to stick to the very first radio button. Once you've done that, we basically have told Arn, hey, this is our source template. Now we wanna tell it where are we gonna put the actual data. So we're gonna pick a space. It could be the same one, it could be a different one. I'm just gonna put it in the same one. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna make a page. You can select either a page or a blog. And then you have your page action. You can either create a brand new page or if you're gonna be updating your pages, you wanna make sure you hit create new or update if it exists because Confluence is not gonna let you have two pages with the same name. So pick, I like this one just as a safety. And then we have to pick our parent page. And so this is all up to you if you have an existing page where you wanna stick it all under. So I'm just gonna put it here under pages for document just for fun, click okay. And then optionally you can add a label. So I'm just gonna call this release notes one and hit save. Now once I do that, nothing has actually happened. It's not time to go to Confluence. Instead, you need to come down here and you need to publish your Confluence page. You have to hit this button here. You have to then select the project that you're gonna get your data from. So I'm gonna get it from that Jira project and then pick your version that you want to release. So I'm gonna do that. Actually, I'm gonna select version 1.0, click publish. 
And now it's going to go grab the data from Jira and it's going to package it all up in a really, really nice package. And then it's going to send it over to Confluence in just a second. So let's go refresh Confluence and see what that looks like. So back over in Confluence, I'm going to simply do a refresh and then I'm going to find that page. So if I recall correctly, I did it under my pages for documents. And so you can see I have a new child page here. So I'm going to click on that and here is my data, right? So the template that I use is not populated with the date, the name, the total number of issues, and then the actual stories that are in that release. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, it's super, super simple and gone are the days of having these ugly copy pasted notes from Jira and Confluence. You can share your Confluence page with whomever you want and everybody can be up to date with your latest release notes. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out all the links down below as there's a lot more resources available for you. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to start your free 30 day trial to automated release notes by my good friends over at Admirvoids. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.